Hi hi everyone, welcome to Weed and Secret. We've got a pretty easy sort today. In the grand scheme of things, compared to what else is available out there these days. In the older days, this might have been considered quite a, an advanced soap, but not anymore. Today, we're making a gorgeous Christmas pudding soap. Now, I used to make Christmas pudding cupcake soaps, but I've actually never made a Christmas pudding soap slice, so that's what we're going to do today. The start of it is really simple, we're just going to mix up the batter, we're going to put some colour, some fragrance, I'm going to put some coffee grounds in there, just to give it that speckly look. And I'm going to use, because I'm not as keen on Christmas pudding smells as I am on gingerbread smells, so I guess you could call this a ginger Christmas pudding soap. So let's blend up the soap, the oils and the lye together. So I'm going to mix up the colours a little bit. Most of the soap is going to be brown oxide, but we're going to have some bronze in there as well and this is the bronze from mineral makeup ingredients And in these two, we're going to put some brown oxide. one loaf at a time. So we'll put the coffee granules in the dark brown. These are just Starbucks medium house blend. And that will give the soap some nice speckles. As you can see, the fragrance is a really deep colour, so I'm suspecting it will probably discolour to dark brown anyway. Oh yes, it's a mover this one.
Okay, now now it's time to uh, make some brandy brandy sauce for the top, and that was my pathetic attempt at an Australian or New Zealand accent. Uh, it didn't even sound South African, did it? No good at accents, but I'm. Um, I think I'm pretty good at being able to tell the difference between a Canadian and American accent. I used to get quite a few Canadians would come in my shop. The Lake District is quite a popular visitor place uh, for Canadians. And they tend to say out, O-U-T, different to how most people say it. And that's the way I can usually tell whether you're Canadian or not. Right, so let's make some brandy butter for the top. So we're going to put some titanium dioxide in here. And that titanium dioxide was just blended with um, sweet almond oil. I was going to say we need some more in, but I don't think I will. It doesn't need to be white, white, does it? Did you see the difference there from stirring to blending? Titanium dioxide does need blending in with a hand blender. I mean, it doesn't have to be. You know, nothing has to be done. Except, except the scientific side of the salt making. It's like cooking. It's a science. So it's got to be done exactly right for it to work. Right, so I've just blended that up and I'm going to have a go just dip in one bar and see what happens. It might be too thin yet. I might need to... Yeah. It's definitely too thin. It needs to be thicker than that before I dip because I want some nice runs and dribbles on there. Okay, so this is what my batter looks like now. And um, I've been trying a few different ways. I was I dipped the soap in it, but I didn't get the drizzles like I wanted. So I'm now going to try. Um, well, actually, I'll show you what I mean by the dipping first. So I just took a piece like this and dipped it in the soap batter, like that. I should let you see what I'm doing. Dipped it in. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. And then what I was going to do is just take a, a kebab stick and just let it kind of... Just drag it down like that, which will work very well, but I thought it's going to be quite time consuming. And that's what it looks like. I don't, th it's nice, but I'm thinking maybe it's not that neat. So we're going to pour the soap into here. So let's have a go with the squeezy bottle and see what we get. I'm sure this will work better because when you see people making cakes, this is usually how they do it, isn't it? I'm 
I mean the dribbles are far better aren't they I just hope they don't run all the way down to the bottom of the soap I don't think they're going to I think I think this is definitely the neatest and most effective way to do it And then just fill the top in and there's no fragrance in here because once if this starts to thicken up then it's just not gonna be very good at all so I'm just smoothing that off and then put this to one side which you'll have to be very careful when you're lifting it up and moving it away uh, but we will come back to pipe some holly and some berries on the top I'm writing Christmas postcards about a fool It's 70 degrees in the shade and the breeze is cool Yeah Even though we don't get snow I still think it's the place to go Where the on top of this soap now and I'm just using a turntable to do it and I just fancied some nice deep green rather than the lime green that I usually use so I've simply got some uh, green oxide in here nice deep rich green and then in here we're using as This is another one of those moments called sometimes it just works. 
I'm so pleased with this. It's absolutely beautiful and so, so festive, isn't it? I hope you like it as much as I do. And I absolutely love a gingerbread fragrance, a good gingerbread fragrance. It's better than like Christmas pudding or Christmas cake. So that's why I've gone for gingerbread. I mean, obviously, it looks like Christmas cake, um, but it smells of gingerbread. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And these smaller sizes, they'll be going in with the Christmas gift pack. So, so far we've got about six, six Christmas soaps. And I don't think I'm going to be, I want to do at least two more Christmas soaps. Uh, but they're not all going to fit in the box. So I might do two options. Um, one set in one type, one set in another type and then a mixed set so I'll see I'm not quite sure yet so um, hope you like those as well don't forget to tune in soon for another video from Eden Secret thanks so much for watching everyone I really really appreciate it and I'll see you all very very soon the perfect ending to a perfect day. Bye bye for now.